our next speaker is Annie Wells. Annie is the Assistant Director of Nursing Public Health Services, Tasmania. She commenced working in the Tasmania Infection Prevention and Control Unit in 2008 as a clinical nurse consultant. Prior to this, Annie worked as an infection control coordinator at Calvary Healthcare Tasmania for a period of 10 years. She has a postgraduate master's degree in advanced practice, infection control and prevention, and her interests with infection prevention control include surveillance of healthcare associated infections, hospital environment hygiene, and education and support of novice practitioners. So uh, I'd like you all to, to welcome Annie. Her presentation title is Key Infection Prevention and Control Messages for Health and Community Sector. Thank you, Annie. Thank you very much, Pam. Thank you very much. I've got about 20 minutes and Pam has asked me to keep it as concise as possible. So my presentation today is just some key infection prevention messages. I haven't necessarily tailored it to acute care and I know there's a, a table of acute care uh, nurses sitting here. So it, it's quite broad and they're probably messages for the general community as well. So. Um, at the end I've got um, some resources that you can take away. And if we could just preface it by saying the unit that I work in is within uh, public health services, within the health department, um, and we're uh, available for you, you know, consultation on uh, infection prevention issues. So I can just uh, encourage you to go to our website if you've got questions that are unanswered or that come out of today's session. So, so some really uh, broad information that I'm about to present to you. Um, so the overview just quickly is we're just going to go through the basics of how infection is spread, um, how we, we, we prevent uh, spreading infection, um, some of the key infections of concern in the health and community sector um, and where to get some more information. So the first two dot points is what I'm going to spend the most time on. Sorry if I've got my shoulder to you guys over there. So the way in which we go about explaining how to prevent infection is first of all to explain um, a concept called the chain of infection and, and many of you have probably heard of the chain of infection before. So I'm going to go through um, what an organism is, um, how it's transmitted and some information about the host. So once you can get this concept in your mind, um, it, it's easy, is really easy to uh, then uh, put, join the dots if you like and figure out what you need to do to prevent an infection from happening. So organisms come in lots of different forms. Um, you can call them lots of different things too, germs, bugs. Um, and so they can be bacteria, a fungi, a protozoa and a virus. So they're some of the germs that we talk about. Um, in terms of sources of infections, humans are really great sources of infection. And we can be symptomatic, so we can, it can be obvious if I've got measles and I've got a, a rash all over my body that something's going on. Or um, we can be asymptomatic, so I can actually be um, infectious to some degree and no one knows about that. So when we think of infection prevention, we have to cover all our bases and we'll see how we do that. Um, we've got a whole heap of germs on our body, which is actually a really healthy thing, and we call these our normal flora. Um, and these actually protect us against disease. So um, if you're healthy and your normal flora is healthy, then you're going to be colonised with these uh, uh, normal flora and they're going to pre prevent some of those germs that can cause infection um, from proliferating because they just can't get a look in, basically. Um, but on occasions, obviously, there are times when germ um, is somewhere that it shouldn't be. Uh, and a good example of that is um, often with urinary tract infections, we get germs from our bowel that, that um, get into our bladder. There's other sources of infection. Um, in healthcare, um, um, some of these aren't so relevant, but animals, insects, um, the environment can cause infections. Um, that's very relevant in, in healthcare, because I'll talk a little bit about cleaning the environment. Um, and of course, food and water as well can be sources of infection. So in terms of transmission, we talk about vertical and horizontal transmission. Um, so vertical is basically from mother to baby, um, and horizontal is all the rest. So we talk about, um, particularly in healthcare, contact. So contact with the environment, contact with the patient. You can pick up a germ that way. Um, and that can happen um, directly from person to person, or it can happen indirectly through the environment or, or other sources. Um, and um, airborne and droplet um, transmission are two other uh, 
forms of transmission that we talk a lot about in healthcare. So for airborne transmission to occur, it's when a germ basically is small enough that it floats through the air. Um, and things like, example of that is, is tuberculosis. There's not a lot of airborne germs. With droplet transmission, that's basically from respiratory secretions. Um, and so uh, if you think of a cough, you cough and the respiratory secretions generally land within a metre um, of that cough. So um, when you're caring for someone and they've got a cough and you're thinking about droplet precautions, it's, it's within that metre that you need to be thinking about. There's other forms of horizontal transmission, water, parentally and vector-borne, which I won't talk much about today. So in terms of the host, that's, that can be either us or it can be our patients. Um, there's a number of things that we need to, to think about. Um, and in terms of transmission of infection, um, the host has to be susceptible. Um, and we're fairly ro robust as, as well individuals. We have um, uh, uh, resistance in terms of just having intact skin. Um, things like the acid that we produce in our stomach, they help prevent infection. Um, some of our behaviours may, be, may be put us more or less at risk. Our age becomes a risk factor for transmission of infection. So the older we get, unfortunately, the more susceptible, susceptible we are. Um, the status of our immunity, so if you've been exposed to a germ before, you may have developed immunity. If you've been immunised, you may also have developed uh, immunity. And our nutritional status is something else that is really important in terms of our host defence if we're exposed to a germ. So getting back to the chain of infection, um, and the way we explain this is that um, a lot of factors have to be present for a, a germ to be transmitted and for an infection to occur. And all we have to do is remove one of the chains of infection to prevent an infection from occurring, and that's really what infection prevention is all about. Um, so for an infection to occur, obviously we've got to have a germ. Um, we have to have a significant enough dose of that germ um, for an infection to occur. We've got to, get, we've got to have a way of the germ getting from where it is to a person, and then we've got to have a susceptible host. So now when we talk about infection prevention, we'll talk about um, some of the areas where we can actually um, prevent that transmission. And that's just a schematic view, really, of the three um, sort of major chains that we want to prevent. Um, and I guess infection prevention is, is more or less about that transmission train. So standard precautions is um, a term that's been around for quite a long time and it involves a whole raft of um, different strategies, if you like. Um, this isn't the complete list, this is sort of uh, the general list, if, if you like. So if you're working in acute care, there, there are other things that you would add to this um, list, like um, don't reuse single-use items, but it's not not such a, a relevant thing more broadly. So standard precautions we regard as the cornerstone of infection prevention. Um, it reduces the risk of transmission. There's actually no need to know what a germ is that a person has if we apply these routinely within our day-to-day um, -day work. So they're used for all patients regardless of whether or not, what not, whether or not they uh, have an infection or not, or we know that they have an infection. Um, so the major strategies are hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette, pers the use of personal protective equip equipment, um, cleaning and uh, waste, man waste and linen management. So in terms of hand hygiene, there's been big blitz on that in the last few years with the advent of Hand Hygiene Australia and particularly in acute care with the five moments. Um, but just talking more generally, we know that hands are one of the major ways that germs get transmitted, not only in healthcare but in the community as well. Um, so it's really important that we clean our hands, we know when to clean our hands. Um, just the point around um, glove use, glove use is not a substitute um, for hand hygiene. You put a pair of, pair of gloves on and whatever you touch, you know, they're going to get it contaminated fairly quickly. So, um, and when you remove your gloves, um, you may also contaminate yourself. So you need to be cleaning your hands um, as an adjunct to using gloves. So I guess the big question is um, hand, hand washing or use of alcohol-based hand, alcohol hand rub. And hand washing um, really needs to be used if you've got visibly soiled hands. Um, and alcohol-based hand rub if you haven't got visibly soiled hands. So um, with hand washing, um, there's... 
sorry. These, um, this signage is available through Hand Hygiene Australia, can be downloaded and put up in your workplace. So just, just quickly, the messages with hand washing um, are that you need to use running water, you need to get a really good lather of soap on your hands because that's what's going to pick up the germs, um, and you need to think about covering all the areas of your hands. So wrists are often missed, between your fingers are often missed. Um, uh, rinse with running uh, warm water, and then drying is equally as important because germs love warm, moist conditions. So. Um, Fairly simple messages, but uh, things that are worthwhile reminding you of. Same thing with hand rub. Get a decent amount so that you've got good coverage over your hands <coughs> and keep rubbing until that's actually dried. Um, res respiratory or cough etiquette is something that, um, in Tasmania, we really got the message out there strongly in 2009 when we had our pandemic. Um, and it got out to all parts of the community, including childcare, which I think is um, a really, really positive thing because you know our kids need to get in habits. Your mum and you, and you know, you're taught to wash your hand as a, hands as a child. So <clears throat> those messages are, are, are really good. But also in terms of respiratory etiquette, that whole coughing into your uh, elbow rather than your hand, which you, you're then going to touch surfaces and contaminate. So the other part of uh, respiratory etiquette, apart from coughing into your shoulder, is blowing your nose with a tissue, putting in the bin, and then washing your hands. So again, really simple messages, but they'll help break the, um, the, the, uh, the uh, transmission cycle. Lots of posters on Google Images that you can just download, and really good to put up in workplaces or waiting rooms or wherever. Um, so personal protective equipment. Um, is something that is um, made available for healthcare workers. Um, it's part of standard precautions and we advocate using this when you think you're going to be exposed to blood and body fluid, which you can't always predict. Um, so you need to probably think about that in, in your day-to-day -day activity. So when we're talking about PPE, it includes glove use, um, protective eyewear and face shields, masks and gowns and aprons. Um, as part of the unit that I work with, we developed a set of videos which um, one outlines standard precautions and the use of personal protective equipment. Has anyone seen it? Because I've got that to play, but I don't want to bore you to tears. Has anyone seen it? These are freely available on our website, so it's about seven minutes. Um, and it just demonstrates the use of personal protective equipment. So the importance of um, putting it on and taking it off and not contaminating yourself. Um, so I think it's worthwhile playing if you haven't seen it. Um, but as I said, they're downloadable. Plus, um, for those working in acute care that, that use transmission-based precautions, the contact droplet and airborne as well. This video will show you how to use personal protective equipment when using standard precautions. Standard precautions are the main way to reduce the risk of transmitting infectious agents in healthcare. They are used for all patients irrespective of their known or suspected infectious status. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is a component of standard precautions. You need to wear PPE to protect yourself when you think you may have contact with, or will be, handing a patient's blood or body fluids. In this video, we'll show you how to put on and remove gloves, aprons, gowns, eyewear and surgical masks. If you anticipate or know you are going to have contact with a patient's blood or body fluids, you must put on gloves. Firstly, remove all wrist and hand jewellery. Perform hand hygiene and wait for your hands to dry. Choose the correct size gloves and remove them from the box. Slide one hand into a glove so the cuff covers your wrist. Repeat with the other glove. When you have finished with your gloves, use your non-dominant hand. Remove the first glove by pinching the inner wrist part of the cuff on your dominant hand. Roll the glove down over your hand and scrunch it into the palm of your non-dominant hand. Remove your second glove by placing your fingers under the cuff on the inner wrist and roll it from your hand over the first glove that is cradled in your palm. 
Dispose of the gloves directly into the waste bin. Perform hand hygiene. Apron or gown. If you are anticipating contact with a lot of blood or body fluids, including aerosol, splash or splatter, or you need to protect your clothes from fluids, you will need to put on a sleeveless apron or in some circumstances a long sleeve gown. To put on an apron, unfold the apron, place your head through the opening, grasp the ties and tie securely at your back. To take off an apron, perform hand hygiene, break the side of the neck strap, Roll the apron away from yourself down to your waist. Break the waist tie. Continue rolling the apron away from yourself into a ball. Dispose of the apron directly into the waist bin. Perform hand hygiene. To put on a gown. Unfold the gown. Slide your arms into the armholes and through the cuffs. Secure the top of the gown at the back of your neck with the ties, tape or velcro. Grasp the waist ties and tie securely at the middle of your back. To remove a gown. Perform hand hygiene. Undo the waist tie of your gown. Undo the neck tie, tape or velcro. Pull the gown away from your body. Pull your arms out of the gown, turning the sleeves inside out. Roll the gown down away from your body. Continue to roll until the gown is in a ball. Dispose of the gown directly into the waste bin. Perform hand hygiene. Protective eyewear. If you think blood, body fluids or any other fluids may splash or aerosolize into your eyes, you will need to put on protective eyewear. If you wear prescription glasses, put the protective eyewear over them. Remember to perform hand hygiene prior to and after removing eyewear. Surgical mask. If you think you may get splashed or have exposure to aerosolized blood or body fluids around your nose or mouth, you should put on a surgical mask. Remove prescription glasses if you wear them. Remove the mask from the box. Hold the mask with the pleats facing away from you and making sure the metal nose wire is at the top. Slightly bend the nose wire to form a gentle curve and open the pleats by pulling down on the bottom of the mask. Place the mask over your mouth and nose and pinch the curved wire on the bridge of your nose. Take the two top ties of the mask and tie at the back of your head, making sure the ties are above your ears. Pull the bottom of the mask so it fits snugly under your chin. Take the bottom ties of the mask and tie at the back of your neck. Gently press the nose piece to conform to the bridge of your nose and cheekbones by pressing down with fingers until it fits snugly. Put on your prescription glasses if you wear them. To take off the surgical mask, perform hand hygiene. Remove prescription glasses if you wear them. Perform hand hygiene. Undo the bottom tie at the back of your neck. Undo the top tie and hold onto the ties. Lean forward and pull the mask away from your face. 
Holding only the ties, place the used mask directly in the waste bin. Perform hand hygiene. Please remember to refer to your local infection prevention and control policies and procedures as well as these videos. So as I mentioned before, cleaning is a really important part of standard precautions because our environment is a source of uh, microorganisms. Um, and so just a couple of cleaning principles. Um, detergent and water goes a really long way and that physical removal of dirt is what you're, you're wanting to do within, within the environment that you're working. Um, usually detergent and water in acute care you'll often in some circumstances need a disinfectant but generally um, uh, detergent and water is um, the most important thing. Think about your equipment that needs to be cleaned regularly as well. No point cleaning if you've got dirty equipment. Um, and as I said, routine disinfection is not usually required. Um, cleaning of shared patient equipment, that's the other important thing. So if you're sharing equipment between your patients, um, it, it's a source of infection. So if you're not um, cleaning them between uses, um, that could be a risk to your patients. Um, and the advent of detergent wipes has been a wonderful thing in healthcare. In terms of blood and body fluid spills, <coughs> um, again, um, needs to be cleaned up fairly promptly, depending on how large it is, will depend on whether you need to use some sodium hypochlorite as well for that area. Um, you can make up your own spills kits or there's commercially available kits um, to purchase. Important thing is to protect yourself when you're cleaning up a blood spill. Um, waste and linen management, again the messages are the same. Think about your personal protective equipment if you're um, discarding waste and handling linen, particularly if it's um, soiled with blood and body fluids. And Sharps disposal is another important message and part of standard precautions. So if you're using a Sharp, you're then responsible for getting rid of that Sharp. And you need to plan ahead, think about where you're going to dispose of it. Um, your Sharps containers ideally should be fixed, but in some settings I know that's not possible. Think about when they're full, making sure that you um, discard them properly and swap them over um, as a safety measure. Um, we don't generally uh, recommend resheathing of needles, and there's a lot of safety devices available these days. They are a bit more expensive, so you need to um, you know, think, think about that, but there are safety devices out there. And just a couple more slides. In terms of immunisation, there's the National Health and Medical Research Council Immunisation Handbook that has a whole section on um, Von, like healthcare workers and what immunisations are recommended. So um, either see your doctor or whoever in your organisation provides that support to see what's appropriate for you. I just listed these as a couple of infections of, of concern more generally in the, in, um, in the community, but um, for the uh, community sector health, work, health workforce as well. And I guess in, for influenza, when we're talking about breaking the chain of infection, um, it's immunisation, it's hand hygiene, it's cleaning the environment, um, and gastro is a little bit trickier, but again, it's cleaning your hands um, and cleaning the environment as well. Um, so as I said before, there's the Australian Guidelines for Infection Prevention and Control as a resource that's downloadable, and the Tasmanian Infection Prevention and Control website, um, we've got a, a raft of resources on there, both for healthcare workers and patient information as well. Um, and feel free to contact us if you need some additional advice. Thank you.